Hi guys, in the previous video we developed a simple purchase application. Uh, there we had only one item for sale and that item's price varied according to the ordered quantity. Now this video we're going to take that uh, purchase app uh, a step further and we're going to have multiple items where each item uh, varies according to specific quantities and I've um, I have a data table here showing our items now I'm uh, we're now assuming we're working for a, a company selling um, kits which teenagers and grown-ups build you know plastic kits which uh, teenagers and grown-ups uh, uh, build to complete products and these and these items are racing cars uh, planes tanks ships planes figures and uh, trucks and these are the article numbers and all these articles are priced according to certain uh, order quantity steps so if you order one so you'd have like racing car would cost you like 15 a passenger plane 26 and so on if you order 10 the racing car would cost like 12 instead of 15 the passenger plane 21 instead of 26 and so on S same thing for a hundred uh, items that you order of a, of a hundred uh, items of your order of a specific uh, product and here is the same thing for a thousand so that's 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 our data uh, uh, product data uh, customer data is the same as in the previous video nothing has changed here you have the various customers and their uh, discounts the discounts they get and here's our user interface which is basically where we type in the customer and uh, discount comes automatically we did that in the in the previous video so I'm not gonna repeat that here and here now that's the new bit we're gonna have we're gonna change um, we're gonna have input our products in here and uh, then all that stuff should appear automatically so uh, let's get started well first step is let's make our uh, user interface a bit user friendly and uh, let's I'm gonna give those cells which receive input again I'm gonna give them a yellow background so this one definitely gets input this one no because this is calculated the discount gets calculated with a VLOOKUP depending on the customer you pick this one's gonna get yellow as well and this one here because these two I have to input the others the other the others are gonna be calculated right let's get started now first thing is I have here my items and I gotta input a specific item here in order to get those results now typing in an item is a drag I could misspell it and I could you know um, completely get it wrong so here again like with like with customers it's advisable to have a drop down and the way we do a drop down is go to data well first of all let me delete that okay so we go to data and then go data validation data validation you pick list and then click in that source field go to data table and pick the whole column I explained that uh, previously the reason you pick a whole column is because if you update your items that drop down is gonna update as well and okay right there we go I'm just gonna show you uh, if I update that now with uh, something else let's say like a fire truck and a cruiser and you'd see the UI would have immediately in there so that's the reason why we uh, select the whole column when uh, creating our lookup right let's take these off no need them now okay now we come to our first calculation article number how do I get my article number well it's quite similar to the way we got our discount and basically here we use a VLOOKUP using this table 
And the way this VLOOKUP works is similar to the one I did in the last example, in the last video, which is basically get, get your function as a, a assistant or wizard. And there's the VLOOKUP most recently used. If you don't have it in most recently used, just go in all and go down to V and you're bound to find the VLOOKUP. There it is. And okay, so now what's my lookup value? Well, I need to find out what I need is the article number, but what I know, that's my lookup value. I know the kit itself. So this cell, where's my, uh, 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 you know, table or my phone book, if you wish. My table is in data table. Basically what I'm selecting is not that just that column, but also that column because I'm selecting both the stuff that I know yeah, the article descriptions and that column which contains the stuff that I need, the article number. Okay. Now, column index number. Well, from which column do I need my stuff? I need the article number and that is in column two. That's one and that's two because we selected A and B. So A is one, B is two. So that's why we put in two. And finally, range lookup. Well, we need an exact match. I need, I need the article number of the tank. And nothing, you know, and and uh, and I explained it previously. You always got to think: Could an item exist between tank and battleship? Well, no. You either have a tank, a battleship, or a fighter plane, or figures. There's nothing in between. So in this case, you put in false because we, in this case, we need an exact match. We need exactly the number of a tank or of a battleship. There's nothing in between. Right, and there we have it. That's the article number of the tank. And if we just change to battleship we got that article number and so on right great now the order quantity I'm gonna just gonna put some random number that's the order quantity now we want to calculate the unit price now we're getting to the crux of the whole thing how do I get the unit price well let's start with a normal VLOOKUP okay again get most recently used now we definitely use the VLOOKUP now there it is what am I looking up for? Well, let's take battleship again and the kit basically. Table array. Let's go back to our data table. Let's select all, all columns. And let's say, let's say I want to calculate the price now for, for one unit. Okay? So basically column number should be one, two, three, should be three. Right? And range lookup, again, it's false because again, there's nothing in between those items you're either you either want a racing car or a passenger plane or a tank there's nothing in between so it's false okay? Just like that. right okay and done so and that's the, that's the price for one unit of a battleship 34 is that right yep perfect let me test it let's take another item let's say uh, figures 12 and you that's right okay so basically we just got half of what we want we get we're getting the unit price but it's not it is not dependent on the order quantity we just have a unit price for one item now and the problem is here this this three here we we have we have a um, we have typed in the three because we are uh, our lookup is basically giving us the result of that column now how can we the question is how can we make this let me get in the function itself how can we make this dynamic so that column number changes with the quantity we ordered so basically with 425 it should have said um, yeah it should have been here this one because 425 is 100 plus so I should be paying this price 7 instead of 12 you see and the, and, and, and the question is how can I make that dynamic well we need a second function and that second function is called match and how does match work well let's call it up wizard and then all go down to m there's match well match requires three arguments first one is the lookup value what are we looking up? What, what are we looking for here? We're not looking for figures. We're looking for, I mean, what we know, 
We, we need, why, why are we using the match function? We need the match function to give us the exact column. Let me just get out of there. Let me explain it. Why do I need the match function? Because right now, I got a VLOOKUP working perfectly. My problem with the VLOOKUP is that this column, I got to put in some number in here. And that number is always static. It does not vary with the order quantity. Now, how can I make that number vary with the order quantity? That's why I need some form of, 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 of dynamic column number for my VLOOKUP. And that number is going to vary according to the ordered quantity. And the order quantity, let's say if I order 425, then it should say, then it should pick the price out of this column. If I ordered, let's say like 18 items, then it should pick the price out of this column. If I pick, if I ordered like 5,000 items, then it should pick this. And, 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 the, and the question is here, how to make it dynamic? And that's where f uh, the, the, the match comes in. Match should pick the column according to the quantity I ordered. That's why, going back into match, my lookup value is the order quantity because this is central to which column should be picked. Okay? Now, where's my lookup array? Well, my lookup array, going to data table, is that stuff here. These are my quantity steps. So that's 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 basically my lookup array. It's like my database. Now, in match type with with match, you have three possibilities. 0, you can either type in here 0, minus 1 or 1. So what's the difference? Well, 0, if you type in 0, it means exact match. But we never have a quantity exact match. You know, it's hardly ever will, ever will somebody order, let's say, like 1 or 10 or 100 or 1,000. People order like 425, 12, 3. See, so 0, definitely not on. With 1 means that it seeks for, uh, it, 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 it takes the order quantity and seeks for something equal or, 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 or smaller than the order quantity. And that means, so that 45 would then be placed, that 45 would mean it is, would be placed in this column because four, 425 is uh, uh, greater than 100. If you ordered like 11, take this column because 10 is smaller than 11. So that's, that's what you get with one. And actually, if you if you if you if you use the function yourself, you can see uh, you can use the help, and you can see here uh, what what each type is. So one is basically for stuff equal, or if your if your search if your sorry if your order quantity is equal or greater than the steps here, you put in one, and minus one is if your order quantity is equal or smaller than the steps. And we look if we have an order quantity of let's say 425, and we that means we need the hundred here. So basically, what we need is the one, because the one means that our order quantity is equal or bigger than the than the one of them steps here, which is basically this one. Okay, and important is the following. When you put one, you have to ensure that your data table, your lookup array, is sorted in an ascending order, which is is here. You see, one, ten, one hundred. If you use minus one, if you use minus one, then your lookup array should be sorted in a descending order. So basically, if we have minus one here, we should have had the thousand here, then the hundred, then the ten prices here, and then the one prices here. Okay. But as we're not using minus one, we're using one, we have those columns sorted in the right way. Okay? So I'm just going to repeat that. With match type here, you have zero, means exact match. That's why here you get nothing because 425 is not an exact match. There is no 425 in here. Right. Now, one, you got 
result three, which is one, two, three, which is this column, which is true. One means that the order quantity, that lookup value here, the order quantity is bigger or equal to one of them steps, which is basically this one, three. So that's why we get three. And minus one is basically if your order quantity is equal or smaller than one of them quantities, and remember, with minus one, you would have to sort your columns. I, I mean, these columns should be placed in a descending order. So basically here, you would have, have the thousand prices, the hundred prices, the 10 prices, and the one prices. And with one, you would need to place your columns in an ascending order, basically the way they are right now. Okay, so that's why we have match type one. So that's our match. And then I go okay, and I get three. So it's basically our price, the price we need is in column three which is basically true. One, two, three. Okay, and that's, that's where our price is. Now, remember, the VLOOKUP, going back to the VLOOKUP, starts, if you look at it, it starts from A to F. And our match starts from C to F. Yeah, so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an offset, so basically, so basically our VLOOKUP is this lot here and our match starts from here. So basically our match is saying column three. It means this one here, column E, but this column is column number five for our VLOOKUP because our VLOOKUP is starting from way back here. So basically to get the right column number, we'd have to add two, okay? So five, now that's, that's right. Our price comes from column five, okay? And that is now correct. One, two, three, four, five. Let's try another example. Let's say I order now um, 11 items. Now my result should come out of column four. Is that true? Let's see. Column one, column two, column three, column four. Right, because when you order 11, you pay the price for 10 because 11 is 10 or more, but still less than 100, so you're not, you're not eligible for column five you are eligible for column four. Okay, let me let me do a, another quantity like 3,000. Now I'm column six. So now I'm eligible for column six, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, exactly. So, so now I got my columns dynamic and now comes the final step, which is basically, I just go in my match here and copy the whole thing. I just select it without the equal. I don't need the equal sign. Uh, um, you just go and select it and then copy it, which is basically control C. Get out of there. Go in my VLOOKUP and replace that three, which we typed in previously, and just uh, control V, which is paste. I paste my match, okay? And there we go. And now I have, if I have figures for 3000, I should be paying three. And that's, let's see, yep, that's true. Now let's reduce the amount. Let's say I have now only 11. I should be paying 10. And yep, that's that's true. You see, so now we have a dynamic price. And let's go in the function again, just to recap. VLOOKUP is quite clear. And instead of a column number, which is fixed, which I type by hand, I use the match function to give me a dynamic column number depending on the order quantity that I have. And that's what I recommend you guys do all the time. First, I build my match function here somewhere outside, you know, just to test it. And I, once I've done my match function, I can always then copy it and insert it in here and replace, replace that part, which had previously a three, and I, and I just pasted that match function in here. So that's the way we have now a unit price which changes with the quantity I ordered. Still till 10, now if I order 152, now I'm eligible for the price 100 plus, and now I'm paying seven. Okay, and that's, there you go. Okay, right. So I don't need that anymore. So the rest is now very easy. Calculating the sum is basically nothing but order quantity times unit price. There's my sum. And the invoice sum is basically the sum times one minus the discount.
that that client gets. And there we go. And now I have the calculation. Of that. And once I, I change to another article and a different order quantity, let's say mm, 315, it just calculates everything dynamically based on that table.